Benjamin Zander lives in Boston. He's a Jewish Brit. He's a world-renowned composer. He gave a TED talk, I think in 2008 or 2009 that I heard. And Zander said he had a Jewish friend who survived Auschwitz, a woman. She told him these words. I was 15 when we were transported to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Our parents were gone. I had an eight-year-old brother. We were on the cattle car together. Me, 15, eight-year-old brother. On the way, I take a look at my brother and I see he's missing a shoe. You know, how does a 15-year-old girl speak to her eight-year-old brother? You're such an idiot. You're such a meshugana. You're such a lazy kid. You're so irresponsible. You don't have a shoe? Mommy is not here to get you another shoe. Tati is not here to get you another shoe. We're going to go wherever we go. How are you going to survive without shoes? I can't believe how irresponsible you are. And I can't take care of this like you. And you be careful to keep on your shoe. And she says, I screamed at my little boy, my little brother. And oh, do I regret it because it was the last words I ever told him. Because the moment we came to Auschwitz, we were separated. And a few hours later, he was reduced to ashes in the crematorium. And that was the last time I ever spoke or saw my brother. I survived the death camp. And on the day of liberation, January 27, 1945, a few weeks after Hanukkah, when the Soviets liberated us and I walked out of the cursed gates of Auschwitz, Arbit Macht Frei, and I made a vow to myself that I'm going to embrace life. I saw so much death, and I'm going to take on life and live life to the fullest. But then I made a second vow to myself. And the second vow that I made to myself was, I will never say anything to a child that could not stand as the last thing I will ever say to them in my life. I will never say anything that if I knew it was the last thing I'm saying to my child, I would never say it, I would not say this. Now that's a pretty big calling. <laughs> Especially when you're going to come home now and nobody's sleeping. And the kitchen is turned over and there's orange juice all over the place. And they managed to found the She'eris HaPleita of the Pach Echot Shel Shemen, Shehayachasim. And they turned it into a quantity of not eight days but eight months of oil all over the new couch that you just saved up for and bought. Right? It's not something we can always live up to. But it's a perspective. 